Good morning, welcome to Key West. Today is Monday, April 27th. 29th, oh, April 29th. 29th. Um, we're currently at the Perry Hotel waiting for a shuttle to take us down to Key West. Uh, super excited, this has been on our bucket list, at least my bucket list for a while. Um, there's a rooster out here, which is really exciting. Um, we're gonna go on a trolley today. Two trolleys. Two tro one is gonna be a... Spooky trolley, non-spooky trolley. <laughs> one has kids on it, and the other one's just about ghosts, so figure it out. <laughs> um, and I'm not sure what else we have planned for today. Stay tuned, because it'll be really fun. Yeah. So we are officially here at Key West. Um, we just took the tram from our hotel to get here. It was about a 20 minute ride. Um, it was really worth it. It was part of our resort fee. Uh, they dropped us off at 700 Front Street. Uh, it only comes once an hour and it fits only 14 people, but we had no problem um, getting on, getting here. Um, already, I love it here. <laughs> Just being able to see everything on the way here. Uh, they did have like a screen over the bus, so I couldn't really get any great views from um, the bus, but um, already love it here. It's amazing. <laughs> um, the shell is way worth it. The parking lot we got dropped off at said it was $7 an hour to park, um, and then for the week it was, I don't remember how much, but so that kind of adds up. Um, it is not a train. Oh, no. uh, so, yeah, but I'm really excited so far. This is more what I thought that was gonna be like. Yeah. It reminds me of like uh, Disneyland or Disney World, but it's real. Yes. Well, they have manatee basics for boaters. I love this so much. Fish, monster, and island, Jane. The Jolly to Rover. Wow, a bunch of these things have like markers, historic markers. So like this is marker number 81. This used to be Thompson's Ice House. Oh, there's a free audio walking tour you can do. We are at Cuban Coffee Queen for breakfast. There are several locations on the island. For all day breakfast, they offer Key Wester, Cuban Breakfast Burrito, Mainlander, Sunrise Special, and Pan Cubano. They also have Cuban favorites and sandwiches like Havana rice and beans and the shipwreck sandwich. They have various smoothies from a simple strawberry twirl to cold buster, energy blast, and rehydrator. I am obsessed with the chickens and roosters that run around this island. To drink, I got the Berrylicious Smoothie for $9.50, which includes raspberries, blueberries, strawberries, non-fat yogurt, and apple juice. Air coffee. Just got iced coffee. Yep. Mm -hmm. Which with chorizo, egg, and... Uh, cheese maybe. It looks really good. It's a special a half a sandwich and a coffee. For like $8.50. And this is the Cupanut bagel. 
with everything, seasoning, honey, cream cheese. Looks good. This is a lot bigger than I was expecting. So here outside a cube Cuban coffee place. We have five stop number two. And we're gonna be building the old place this morning. It's also outside Max C Garden. Just open this room on the trolley. This looks like something bad. And I mean the whole one side. Are you excited? Really fun. <laughs> but you do notice that all the houses here have metal roofs. That is because of the Great Fire of 1886, which ended up destroying 70% of Key West because back then the roofs were made of wood. So the fire would just hop from house to house to house. And in fact, you Buffett fans, the white building right over there was his recording studio when he lived down here called the Shrimp Boat Sound Company. Everybody's favorite, Sloppy Joe's Bar. Now originally Sloppy Joe's was down to where Captain Tony's is from 30, 1933 to 37. Sloppy Joe Russell was out with his buddy Curtis Hemingway having a drink. The landlord came up to Sloppy Joe and said, I need to increase your rent. Well, Sloppy Joe didn't want to pay the extra dollar. So he told his friends to pack up their chairs, bring their beer, and then they walked down here. Now, Mr. Hemingway wanted something more memorable out of the bar. So he decided to walk into the men's restroom and rip the urinal off the wall and walk it down to his house. It is actually still there today. 117 bars here on the Wall Street. How we did it, we would actually stack them pretty high, like the one right here in the corner, which is called the Bull, the Whistle, and the Garden of Eden. Now, the Garden of Eden is a very unique bar because it's a clothing optional bar. During COVID, it was nice seeing all the different styles of masks here. <laughs> Now, the Joe building built in 1871 is the St. Carlos Institute. Adjacent to this was a coffee shop. At that coffee shop on April 1st of 86, at 2 o'clock in the morning is when the Great Fire started. Lasting for 12 straight hours, destroying 70% of Key West, Florida. And the Strand Theater, built in 1934, the Bahamasaw architecture called Rococo. You'll never see a fancier Walgreens. <laughs> At one time, it was actually home to Ripley's, believe it or not. And in 1993, the actor John Goodman came down here, made a movie in there called The Matinee. The Lighthouse, right here on my right next to a banyan tree. Originally down by the buoy, built in 1825. Unfortunately, the hurricane of 1846 destroyed the lighthouse. But they decided a year later in 1847 to bring it back by box and rebuild it again. One of the very few lighthouses I know that's actually not on the water. And these five houses do look identical. These are called shotgun houses. They're called shotgun houses for two reasons. One, when you open the front and the back doors, at the same time, the doors are perfectly aligned, which means you're actually looking through the barrel of a shotgun when you open up the doors. You could actually shoot a gun through the house they would actually go all the way through and not hit anything in the house. And in 1919, this girl Gabriel was stationed here. Now the hurricane came through here and she lost a lot of her friends. So she actually wanted to build something. You'll see the prayer grotto off on the right hand side. She built that from coral. Her and her friends would build, started building yeah. that in 1919. For each pearl that she would lay, she would say a prayer. 
when they completed the prayer grotto in 1922. In over a hundred years, ladies and gentlemen, we've never had the eye of a hurricane come across the island here of Key West, and we've never lost a single life of person due to a hurricane. The federal building right here on my right, you'll see three gigantic trees. These are called K-Pok, K-A-P-O-K. You'll see the massive trunk from the one right there in the center. The roots from those trees grow to about 150 feet below the surface. The seed pads from those trees at one time were used by the military as life preservers. This is Mallory Square Market, one of the many shops in Key West. It has plenty of Key West souvenirs, including Hawaiian shirts and tropical outfits, Key West shirts, long sleeves and tank tops. Over here, there are tons of magnets and wooden chimes, signs, and glassware. and hopefully you can find a mug with your name on it. And out here is the Shipwreck Museum. <laughs> Doesn't smell like anything. There are so many different types of sponges. Here is the aquarium. It's Florida's oldest, established in 1935. We thought about visiting, but decided not to due to the slightly expensive cost of $20.99 per person and relatively small size. For lunch, we are eating at Pepe's Cafe, which was established in 1909. Harry S. Truman actually had coffee here while in office. Cafe's Cafe and Steakhouse, the second oldest eatery in the state of Florida, the oldest eatery in the Florida Keys. Looks like we have plenty of beer and ale and spirits. We are skipping their breakfast menu since we are here for lunch, or as they call it, noon tide nibbles and entrees. Appetizers include oysters, Key West pink peel and eat shrimp, and stone crab claws. They have house-made soups and a few salads. For entrees, they have plenty of sandwiches such as pulled pork, grilled cheese, BLT, club, chicken breast, fresh local fish, burgers, and a patty melt. This menu is really fun. They have happy hour, some merchandise, and it's a pet-friendly establishment. Which fish did you get? The black and mahi mahi. It's macaroni salad. Yeah, that's the way to do it. And I got the mixed green salad with tomatoes, red onions, carrots, radishes, and cucumbers with a side of blue cheese dressing. Are you calling your mom? They don't recognize the number they're not going to pick up. <laughs> now, we're going to the Sales to Rails Museum. Tickets are $10, but our admission is part of the Old Town Trolley Tour and Ghost and Gravestones Tour Bundle 
This museum covers the importance of boats to Key West and Flagler's Oversea Railway. For 23 years, from 1912 to 1935, passenger trains were operated on daily schedules between Key West and New York, and automobile and train car ferries were operated between Key West and Havana. In 1938, the railroad was converted to the Overseas Highway. The Age of Sail Seen through the lens of the island's rich history, Key West represents the high point and eventual end of the Age of Sail. Sail power was used in the industries that made Key West the richest city per capita in the United States. Sponging, turtling, fishing, wrecking, and cigar making. So this is a timeline outlining some of these significant events in Key West's history along with what is going on in the rest of the world during this time. We start with Ponce de Leon discovering the dry tortugas in 1513 followed by treasure ships sinking off the coast of Florida Keys in 1622. A lot happened in the 1800s. Salvaging became one of the most important industries in Key West. Juan Pablo Salas is given private ownership of the territory of Key West by the Spanish governor of Florida. John Simonton purchased the island in 1822. David Porter established a naval station base in 1823. And in 1828, Key West became the richest city per capita in the U.S. Then, Fort Jefferson and Fort Zachary Taylor were built. In the late 1800s, cigar making took over salt and fishing industries. The Great Fire burned down most of the island homes. Steamship service was established connecting Key West, Havana, and Tampa. Henry Flagler proposed building a rail to Key West and the railway line from Jacksonville to Miami was completed. Between 1905 and 1912, construction took place on the Key West extension of the railway. Taft and FDR visited Key West during the presidency. In 1930, the sponge and cigar industries began to decline. In 1935, the Labor Day hurricane devastated the Keys and destroyed the Overseas Railway. And in 1938, the Overseas Highway officially opened. Sailor Art since voyages for men aboard ships could last a few days for fishermen, spongers, or wreckers, a few months for turtlers, or even years for explorers and whalers, during downtime they would occupy themselves by making shell boxes, scrimshaw, bone carvings, and ships in bottles. Figureheads. Carvings of loosely clad women were used as offerings to the ocean gods, allowing their vessels to proceed without harm. They could also define the wealth of the owner and the rank of the ship. Over time, they became a naming device and way to identify ships. In the 1800s, they were no longer used due to their heavy weight. Wreck Ashore Wrecking was one of the earliest and most prolific revenue producers of the Florida Keys, with the earliest wreckers being the indigenous Indians in the area. The heyday of wrecking was in the mid-19th century when there were inaccurate charts, lack of weather forecasting, and absence of lighthouses causing numerous wrecks. Early settlers in the 1830s noticed that the sponges that washed ashore after a storm could be very useful as washing implements and used them extensively on the island. And by 1890, Key West had a virtual monopoly of the United States sponge trade. After the age of sail came the age of rail. In 1885, Henry Flagler, one of the wealthiest men in the world, moved to Florida with his wife. He was convinced Florida was going to become the country's Riviera and had the aspirations for luxury hotels along the East Coast. Realizing the Panama Canal was going to be completed in 1913, he conceived of establishing a railhead in the southernmost deep water port of the state. Overcoming the obstacles of significantly deep water and extreme tidal flows earned its nickname the Eighth Wonder of the World. The original plan of the Key West extension was to minimize the number of bridges as it was cheaper to build up roadways through the mangroves between the keys than it was to construct concrete and steel bridges. Engineers soon learned that the hurricanes could easily wash the fill away. This, coupled with the residents' well-founded fears that a long causeway would radically change the environment, prompted the FEC's determination to build 42 bridges necessary to reach Key West. To create the bridges, they started with a coffered dam, which was put exactly where the bridge foundation would be. They made holes and then put green wood pilings in said holes. They then poured a special concrete mix using a tremie. 
Once this concrete plug was solid, they pumped out the water, brought in wooden forms, and filled it with concrete. Then the arches were created. This talks more about Henry Morrison Flagler, the man behind the Oversea Railway. He was 70 years old at the time, when the average male lifespan was 49. He worked with John D. Rockefeller in forming Standard Oil of New Jersey, making them the richest men in the world. Even with his vast fortune, the railway would challenge Flagler, but he never wavered. <laughs> This is Henry Morrison Flagler, and in these picture frames are his various luxury hotels, like the Breakers and the Royal Palm Hotel. hurricane of 1953 brought the end of the Key West Railway extension. Officially the most powerful hurricane eye to hit the U.S., the storm had winds of 200 miles per hour with even greater gusts. A 20-foot high wall of water caused by the storm surge washed an evacuation train off the tracks except for the locomotive. The damage to the tracks was too significant and expensive to replace. And back in the front of the museum is a scale model of Fort Jefferson in the Dry Tortugas. Construction of Fort Jefferson began in 1846. It was built to protect the southern coastline of the United States and the lifeline of commerce to and from the Mississippi River. Don't you want to give him a hug? He said, give me a hug. And this is the original sponge van constructed in 1926 located inside the Max C Garden. He definitely looks like he just like came out of the water. Hey, doers, we're here with uh, Captain Perry, maybe uh, this guy, and we have some stuff to review, I guess. Yeah, so it's been a really long day, or it's felt like a really long day here. Uh, so we took the tram, the tram shuttle thing here from the hotel, yeah. um, and we had breakfast at Cuban Coffee Queen. Um, I had the Cuban bagel and it was really good. It was a lot bigger than I was expecting it to be. Um, and then I also had the very delicious smoothie that was really good. The only downside is uh, I appreciate the paper straws, but it like got destroyed in seconds. Like I couldn't <laughs> use it with my smoothie. I got a breakfast sandwich. I don't remember what it was called, but it was eggs, cheese, chorizo, Spanish chorizo. And it was half a sandwich and came with a coffee, so it was a special. One thing I really like is the coffee is coffee, like iced coffee with frozen uh, ice that's also made of coffee. So as it melts, you get like two coffees out of it. Um, it was very good though, I, I really enjoyed that. Um, next, we went on the trolley thing. Yeah, we rode the whole trolley that. around the island. <laughs> I uh, got some, some insider information on a lot of the hot spots here, cool places to check out, so that was really neat. And the one thing we were wondering about is because there's like that conch train and then there's this open air trolley that we went on. Um, the open air trolley does both Old Town and New Town, where the conch train only does um, Old Town. Um, and then it also, it looked really bouncy like the conch train. Yes. Um, where the trolley just is like a normal trolley with instead of windows it's just like all open air um, and if you are staying at some of the hotels it's a great way for transportation to those hotels um, because they have stops at those new town areas but yeah I think that we wanted to do that first to kind of get like an overview of Key West and like some insider information about like what's good and what's going on around here um, so I really am glad that we did that first mm -hmm. Then we did what? We did some shopping. We grabbed some lunch at Le Pepe. Yeah, Pepe's. Oh, Pepe's. <laughs> it's like the oldest restaurant in Key West. That was really cool. Uh, smaller than I thought it was going to be. 
Um, food was really good. Looked like they have great breakfast options, lunch options, dinner options, bar, indoor outdoor seating, some very tasteful uh, paintings, artwork. Uh, there's a naked lady inside, a painting of a naked lady inside. Um, I got the fish sandwich, that was very good, with pasta salad. So. Macaroni salad. Yeah. Um, and I got the, I got a mixed green salad and that was really good. Um, can't go wrong with that. And we did the sales to rails tour, or museum, which came with the, con, or the old trolley, old, old town, town trolley, trolley and our gravestone tour. Um, I thought that was nice because it, we drove here from uh, Anna Marie Island and so we saw like a lot of the bridges and some of the stuff that was falling apart that we like weren't sure what it was about so that kind of talked about like the railroad stuff more um and that was really fascinating since we saw that on the way here mm -hmm. yeah, it was neat i uh wish that we were more in the mood to do it um because i would have liked to read maybe a little bit more of the signs but i just wasn't really feeling it when we did it to be honest yeah it definitely takes a little bit to get adjusted to like the sun and everything since it's we left Ohio and it was like 40 degrees there. <laughs> so. okay. Okay. Riley, thanks for putting the balls in <laughs> <laughs>